Hi everyone, thanks for joining last session of the day. Uh, today we are going to ingest GitHub repositories into Copilot for Microsoft 365 using graph connectors uh, and we will build the graph connector in Python. My name is Aicha Bash. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft and I'm so excited to be here. Let's get started. So before I jump in the demo, I just want to highlight that this is part of a series we are running uh, with our team. And if you want to dive into Copilot for Microsoft 365 extensibility, if you've never heard of it before, uh, our series is actually available on YouTube. You can go ahead and check out Valdex and Gary's sessions earlier uh, in the community call, and you can learn more about uh, what is uh, plugins, what is graph connectors. And today I will show you one sample about graph connectors and we will have more samples coming in the community calls in the next week so uh, check them out as well okay so in today's session we will focus on copilot for microsoft 365 extensibility specifically uh, graph connectors and we will build it in python we will inject external data being github connectors and i think it's better if i just jump into demo and um, get hands on it's much better for us i guess Oop not the resources. OK, so let me quickly walk you through what I have in place. It's a very simple sample. I just have a config file. In the config file, I have client ID, tenant ID, and graph user scopes. I created Entra uh, app before, and you just need to go ahead and create Entra app. Um, and um, you need the uh, client ID. If you choose the account type as um, all organizations, then you can keep it as common. Otherwise, you can provide tenant ID. And I've, I put all of the graph user scopes because I don't want to go back and forth. We will need uh, external connection and also external item um, scopes for this demo. And let's jump into main uh, file. Um, OK, so what, we have, what do we have here? Um, we have settings first, first and uh, foremost from the config file. And for by using the settings, we're actually creating our graph, meaning we are actually creating graph client. And then the first thing we do is we're calling graph.getUser. Let's check out what we have in the graph.py. Uh, and here we are initiating um, our, uh, we're first of all, of course, handling the authentication. And here we're using device code credential. This is is only for the demo purpose. We don't actually recommend that a lot for the production level projects, but for the demo sake, uh, we are actually going to use the device code credential. And finally, we are calling get user and we are getting a display name, email, and user principal name of the user. And to do that, we just need to return self.userclient, me, get, and we are getting the user information we want. Before I run the project, I just want to highlight that today we are going to focus on three main areas. The first one is creating a connection for graph connectors. The second one is creating schema. And the third one is creating items in our existing connection. OK, so let's start with the create connection section. And actually, wait, before I jump into it, I just want to run our project and show you how the authentication works and how we get the user information. OK, so I'm running Python 3 main.py. This will actually bring me a link for um, logging in. And then I have a code here. Let's just copy this because we need to use for the login. And I'll paste it here. And once I'm done with the authentication, then I can start with my options and I'll walk you through all of them. OK, so the first thing I should see here is obviously get user because let's go back and check what we have in the main. After getting the graph client, we are actually calling graph.getUser. And there we go. We are already retrieving Aichabash. Uh, and that means that we can move further. OK, before we choose any of these options, I just want to show you the code uh, step by step so we understand together. Uh, first thing I will do is creating a new external connection. When I extend this, there are three main important things to create a connection. 
the first thing is ID, the second name, and third description. You can either provide this information in the external connection or you can ask input uh, for the user. So user can provide the input and you can create the uh, external connection. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm using, um, I'm actually asking user to provide me an input. And finally, when I create the external connection, I'm just going to call the graph client and external connection post and we will post the new connection in the body. So let's try to do that and see. And actually how I'm calling this uh, function in the first place is in the main. And let me extend the first elif. Here I'm actually choosing one and it is going to call graph.create connection and it is our function. Okay, let's select one and I will say, connector demo and you can actually provide um, better ID name and you can provide different uh, description and name here but just the sake of time I'm just putting something short connector demo for Python and name and ID can be different and um, just for demo sake I just kept them same and our connection is getting created. How do we know that our connection is getting created or if it is created at all? Here it says successfully. Let's go ahead and check in the admin portal. So this is the admin.microsoft.com and this is the place we actually manage all of our connections. Uh, here you, in the menu, you can go to settings, search and intelligence in the data source here. You should be able to see all of your data connections, meaning all of your connect connectors. Now we just create a new connector called um, con demo connector, and we are supposed to see that in this list. I think it's going to load in one point, and then we can see if it exists at all. Yes. Okay, connector demo. It is created already. Let's go back. Second step for us is actually I'll go through the menu first. The second step for us is creating a new schema. And here the second second choice for me is creating the schema. Let's go to um, the schema. And before that, I of course need the connection ID. And don't forget the connection ID you defined here. This is what we need. We will provide our connection ID so that we will assign the schema uh, in our connection. Let's go to the schema function and extend this. This is the place where we define what kind of properties uh, we want inside our connection. And here we define the properties we want, such as name, description, and HTML. And the, inside the properties, setting, settings are very critical. For example, you need to define is searchable true, is retrievable true, so Copilot can actually understand that uh, these properties are searchable. You also have to uh, define labels, meaning that label title is actually on our name, and this is helping for semantic indexing to understand that the label title is the name property. And same for, for example, URL, label URL is actually HTML URL. This makes Copilot to understand uh, our data and this is what we're defining in the schema in the first place before actually sending our data in, uh, in the extension, uh, in the connector. So once we define our properties and um, the only thing I'm getting from uh, GitHub is actually name, description and HTML URL. And after that, I'm calling the client and then in the external connections, I'm creating the schema inside my existing connection I just created and I'm calling schema.patch and I'm sending out the schema I just defined right here. So let's try to do that. Um, I will select two. And here I need to define my connector ID, which is connector demo. And this is going to create schema. As you can, um, as you remember, currently uh, my connector is in draft. The moment I actually sent out the uh, schema, which is now it already happened, it is going to be in the publishing version, meaning that when I refresh admin panel, I can actually see the um, state changes right away. It is not 
draft anymore, it will be yes, publishing. Publishing can take about three to five minutes, but I, I don't want to keep you waiting, waiting because I already have uh, three minutes left. Um, I'm going to actually send all of my data into a community demo that I created before. This is the connection I created earlier today and uh, I sent the schema, but I, did, I didn't send any data there yet. And this is going to be in the same format in three to five minutes. So let's use this one instead, instead and we can send our data right away. How are we going to send our data? First of all, um, we need uh, GitHub repositories. So I have a function for that here. I'm using api.github.com and I am just providing the username. And in this demo, we are going to get GitHub repositories from PNP, uh, actually. And then we will ingest some data from PNP to Copilot. And after getting the data, and I need to provide username as PNP, the next step for me, let's just extend. We will, we will provide connection ID, username, and then we will call get the repos. And after that, we will create items, meaning we will create the data and actually we will send our data in the connector. So here for each um, repository, I'm calling this and creating external item. And in the external item, ID is my repository name, and then, um, ACL is defined as everyone and our, our properties, we're only getting three, name, description, HTML URL, and we are just calling uh, the item, we are putting the item in um, our connector and we are calling this for every single um, repository available. I'm not using any GitHub token, so we will just get a couple of the uh, repositories from the PMP and let's call three and we can send our um data but let's check community demo okay community demo connection id username is pnp and then we have a list of repositories from pnp and we are creating items one by one so we will just get 10 to 15 repositories. It's getting created. Let's go to the admin portal and create the result type, result type while we're sending the data over. We can just say here that community demo repos. You can give any name here. And we can choose content source. And for us, content source is already created. It's loading in the list. So the reason why we are defining the result type is we want to see the data coming through in a proper shape for such as adaptive cards. And but once we search it on any search or a, on Copilot, we want to see that adaptive card coming as a result. You can define this using code or you can just define this in the admin panel. And I don't know why this is taking a lot, okay community demo I will choose as a data. Okay, so we have a designer here and you can see what kind of properties you can use. We have description HTML name. I will launch this and then choose result with URL and description. And here I will provide, oops, name, sorry, it's too small, HTML URL and description. This is going to create me a JSON file, and then I'll go back, paste the JSON here, next, add result type, and this is just supposed to add the result type inside my connector. And meanwhile, I think my data ingestion is done. Yes, these are the data we actually got from um, PNP so far. It's a small data, but it's fine. And I already tried this with another connector, to be honest, because I know it would be a really short amount of time and I wanted to show this to you anyways. Last step is including connector results in our vertical. And I will add this in our vertical, meaning that our data will be ingested in our search and all of the other experiences. If you want to see your um, results 
um, uh, option your connection name in the vertical specifically. You can go to customizations and add this in your vertical. Make sure that you put a good name and it will appear in the search. Let's quickly go to office.com first and search our result. For example, um, I will search graph connector. It's easier for me. Um, and I'm supposed to see a adaptive code we picked with a name, URL of the repo, and then a description. And there we go. We already have the data and I will click to it and it's a proper uh, reposter from PMP. And the same thing is supposed to happen for um, Copilot. Um, let me see. Wait, I'm just getting. I not this one. I, I'm just trying to move this um, hover over situation, but okay, the final step, apologies. I'll, okay, found it here. Somehow I couldn't click it. Okay, finally, I'll just type to copilot um, just a second. Okay. Are there any? graph connector samples and here my result should show up right away because my data is already a part of the vertical it's already a part of search and um index so i should be able to receive the proper um github reposter related to it okay something is one reference okay yeah there we go. <laughs> Finally, sometimes it works, sometimes uh, in the demos it doesn't work. Today is the lucky day, I guess. Okay, there we have it. Um, this is what I wanted to share today. I have a couple of resources. We have a new learn module uh, for connectors. You can go through the learn module and create a connector from scratch and make it work for Copilot for Microsoft 365. We have a lot of samples you can check and have a look not only in Python, but in many languages. And also if you have any questions regarding Copilot extensibility, plugins or connectors, feel free to reach out. Thank you.